The Dieppe Raid and the D-Day Invasion were both instrumental in World War II, but each for very different reasons. The Dieppe Raid took place on August 19, 1942, and is remembered as one of the least successful battles in Canadian history. In this raid, the Allies attempted to capture the Nazi-held port of Dieppe. The landing was a sort of training run to test new techniques, and there are also theories and documents stating that this was partly a pinch raid to steal an Enigma machine. Upon approaching the port, the troops encountered unexpected resistance, and the shots they fired at each other warned the shore of approaching ships. By the time the soldiers reached the land, they were losing the cover of darkness, and the shore was unanticipatedly rocky, skewing their operations. Of the 6,100 people who went to Dieppe, most of which were Canadians, half of them were killed, wounded, or taken prisoner. In comparison, the D-Day invasion was extraordinarily successful. This invasion turned the tides of the war. The Normandy landings of D-Day took place on June 6, 1944. The plans for this invasion had been in the making since 1943, and everything was accounted for, right down to the tides and the phases of the moon. The Allies had given false information to the Nazis as to when and where their invasion would take place. They further backed up this false information by creating a dummy force on the coast of Britain to make it look as if the Allies were planning on leaving from that part of the coast. The D-Day invasion was the largest seaborne invasion ever. Through thought-out strategies, the Allies managed a successful invasion, and from that point onward were able to push into France and eventually the rest of Europe. One of the main reasons why the D-Day invasion was successful was because months of planning went into the D-Day invasion while the Dieppe raid involved little planning in comparison. When the military planned for the Dieppe landing, they knew they were taking a risk, but they thought that the element of surprise and heavily armored tanks would enable them to successfully capture, destroy, and then withdraw from the port. The invasion's failure showed military leaders that they needed to know the coastline and infrastructure better, rely more on air power and not tanks, and keep the element of surprise. Another reason the Dieppe landings were unsuccessful was because the terrain created unplanned disadvantages. The intelligence on the state of the beaches had been collected through postcard photos and aerial views. The plan for the Dieppe landings relied heavily on the use of tanks, but the rocky shore prevented the tanks from advancing. The few tanks that made it across the beach were unable to destroy the buildings because the guns on the tanks were not strong enough. Moreover, the Allies were unaware of the hidden positions of the Germans in the cliffs. When the Allies attacked at the Normandy landings, they knew the terrain well and did not rely so heavily on tanks, instead using air support to protect those on the ground. They ensured that the intelligence they had on the infrastructure on the beaches at Normandy was accurate, so that when the D-Day invasion took place, nothing could go wrong. During the Dieppe raid, the Allies lost the element of surprise before reaching the shore. When plans were made for the Normandy invasion, they spread false information so that most of the German army would be at a distant location, causing nothing unexpected to stand in their way. Finally, the Allies learned from the Dieppe raid that suitable re-embarkation crafts would be needed. More lives could have been saved at the Dieppe raid if the military had planned an accurate evacuation plan. At the Dieppe landing, many soldiers were trapped on the shores with no cover and nowhere to go. Although the re-embarkation crafts were unneeded at the D-Day invasion, the crafts were useful in many other situations during the war. Although the Dieppe landing was a failure, many valuable lessons were learned from it that were used to save lives not just at the D-Day invasion, but throughout the entire war.